everybody, this video is on more abstraction, so if you haven't seen my previous abstraction videos, go back and watch them now. It'll take 10 minutes and it'll bring you up to speed as I will be referencing a lot of things from previous videos. Here I have our previous function we defined in intro to abstraction, our add one to every num function, which adds one to every number in a list of number. Let's now define a similar function called sub1 from every num that subtracts 1 from every number in a given list of number. Following the design recipe, we have the signature and purpose statement. Sub1 from every num takes a list of number and returns a list of number, and it subtracts 1 from every number in a given list of number. And we have some examples. Given empty, it returns empty, and given a list 1, 2, 3, returns the list 0, 1, 2. Using our list template, which I've defined in a previous video, we fill out the empty case, which we know will return the empty list based on our first example. Then we want to subtract 1 from the first element of the list, which we can do using the built-in function sub1. Then we join the result of sub1 from every num on the rest of the list, which is a list with every element decremented by 1, and the decremented first of the list using cons. And our tests pass. Now let's compare this to our add one to every num function. Hmm, there are a lot of parts that are very similar, like both return empty when the list is empty. But the else case seems quite different. This leads us to our second step of the abstraction design recipe, which is make the functions as similar as possible. We see that the sub1 from every num function uses the built-in sub1 function, but we can just use the classic minus and the actual literal number 1. Our tests still pass, so we know that this is a good step in the right direction. However, the plus in add1 to every num takes 1 as its first argument and then the first of the list. Let's switch these around, and we know we should still get the same result since addition is commutative. Our tests still pass, and this leads us to the third step of the abstraction design recipe, which is circling the differences between these two functions. Aside from the obvious name differences, the biggest difference between these two functions is the function applied to the first of the list and one. Now that we have found the differences, we can use this circle difference to create an extra argument to the newly abstracted function. Let's call this function op1 to every num, where op means operator, such as plus or minus. We start with the signature, but wait, how do we represent a function like plus in a signature? What about a function like minus? We can use the signatures of these two functions, which are both the same. Plus takes two numbers and returns a number, as does minus. We put this signature in brackets to get our abstract function's signature and purpose statement. Op1 to every num takes a function that takes two numbers and returns a number, and a list of number, and returns a list of number. Op1 to every num, when given a function and a list of numbers, applies this function to every number in the list and the number one. We write some examples where you can see that op1 to every num takes a function like plus or minus as its first argument, and then a list of number as its second argument. Our function uses the list template, just like our previous functions, and returns empty in the empty case. The else case is also very similar to our previous function, but now instead of applying plus to the first of the list and one, or minus to the first of the list and one, it applies the given argument f to the first of the list and one. Don't forget that in the recursive call, you have to pass along f to follow the signature. And as you can see, our tests pass. Our final step of the abstraction design recipe is to rewrite our previous functions using this abstracted function definition. In add one to every num, we know we want to add the number one to every number in the list, so the function we pass to the abstracted function definition is plus. And our tests 
still pass. Similarly, for sub 1 from every num, we know we want to subtract 1 from every number in the list, so we pass minus to the abstracted function definition. Can our tests still pass? We can even define new functions using our abstract function very easily. Something like multiply every num by 1, which would multiply every number in a list of numbers by 1. Unfortunately, this isn't very interesting, and we get the same list back. This brings up an interesting question. Can you think of a way that we can make this abstracted function even more abstract? What if we wanted to be able to add, subtract, multiply any number to each number in a list of number? Well, just like we did for the first subtraction video, we can abstract the number into an extra argument resulting in an even more powerful function that can define hundreds of other functions. I hope this video helped, and until next time.